Hello DC fans, my name is Kim and if you do not watch my channel Geekerella, you may not know that I am a massive Superman fan. But we're not here today to talk about the Man of Steel, but in fact the Girl of Steel, Supergirl. Now DC has been so awesome in sending me a copy of the recently released Supergirl Book 1 by Peter David. And today we're going to talk about it here on the DC Fans channel. But before we go completely all out in that direction talking about Supergirl, I feel like we have to talk a little bit about the backstory of this book. Because in fact, this book isn't about the Kara we all know and love. No, this is a completely different Supergirl with a completely different backstory. So this book collects issues 1 to 9 of the, to be honest, hard to find Peter David run from 1996. And I think it went until about 2003, I'm quite sure. So this collects issues 1 to 9 and a few different special issues as well. So this run of Supergirl is set after the Crisis event where DC notoriously decided to kill off Supergirl. I know! What even? So this version of Supergirl takes place after the event and isn't actually Supergirl. Well, she is Supergirl, but she's not. So this Supergirl was engineered by Lex Luthor, so she is a synthetic creation that was supposed to mimic Superman's powers. So Lex created this version to fight some specific aliens, but she does have some very different powers from Superman. For example, she can shapeshift and also has quite a lot of psychic abilities. So in this particular story, she was named Matrix. So this is her name in the story, Supergirl, AKA Matrix. So this story therefore follows synthetic Supergirl, not the real one. Let's just get that out in the open for those that have no idea about any Supergirl stories. So this story starts with a bang. Supergirl aka Matrix tries to save a troubled girl named Linda Danvers, that's right, who is a character in this story that gets caught up in some crazy satanic cult. I know right, I know what you're thinking, it's like intense from the get-go. But unfortunately Supergirl fails to save her and kind of accidentally merges with her character. So she's now part Supergirl and part Linda Danvers. So this story of course focuses on Supergirl as a superhero and her struggling with her other persona, Linda Danvers, who has a very traumatic and horrifying past and these memories keep resurfacing and Supergirl has to somehow live through them. And we actually find out that the character of Linda Dammers has a very dark personality and went down a very dark road before she was killed. So of course this creates so many conflicts with Supergirl's very moralistic view on the world. Now as always there is one big bad villain that always takes over the whole story and in this story it is a demon named Buzz Aldrin. Yes, he plays a massive part in this story, and I'm not completely going to spoil anything, but he also doesn't play a big part in this story. So of course there are some issues that completely focus on him as the main villain in that particular arc. And I think there are some stories that I don't think anyone really knows how they can fit him into this particular arc. So they sort of just have him creeping and doing a commentary in the background, which is a little bit weird. But my favorite part in this book is all the amazing guest stars that appear in this comic. Of course, we have the basics. So Superman, we have Mar and Pa Kent, we have Rampage, we have Gorilla Grodd. And now probably my favorite guest in this was Mary Marvel, who is Shazam's protege. Though her story in this book was quite a simple one, it actually had quite a bit of an impact. And I think it was a really important issue at the time that it was released. Now I don't want to go into what it actually was because that may spoil the storyline for you, but I feel that that was, for me, probably the most touching story out of the book. So overall, I would probably give this a 4 out of 5 stars. Now going into this, I was kind of preparing myself because obviously this is a new Supergirl. It's not really a rendition of Supergirl that I particularly liked, but I did find that the story was amazing. The art was good. It was, look, it was 90s as hell. This book is just dripping with 90s stuff. We've got like flannelette shirts. We've got skateboards, so much stuff in here, but it, the art was still attractive and it was very colourful so it really popped. So despite me not being overly keen on this particular backstory of Supergirl, I still highly suggest picking this up. It had some very dark and compelling storylines, there was a lot of dark humour, and to be honest all the characters interested me. And that's very hard to do in a comic. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. This was a review of Supergirl Book 1 by Peter David for the DC Fans channel. My name is Kim, aka Geekerella, and I will see you very, very soon. Goodbye.